All right, good morning, Proximity, and uh, we're so glad to be with you this morning. A couple of announcements. First, our Zoom in is happening on um, Tuesdays at noon. So if you would like more information or to be a part of that, then you can email Pastor Jason and you'll be added to the list and given the link so that you can join in and um, gather with us as we chat. And then um, we are still accepting offerings online. So go to our website, click the donate button, and then it will come up giving you an option to make a donation. And then you can fill in your information. Or if you want a physical pickup, you can email Pastor Jason as well.
Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Good morning. Welcome to Proximity Church Online. Believe it or not, this is Sunday number 10 that we are coming to you online. Uh, it was back on March 22nd, I think was our first Sunday uh, together, trying this out online. We've learned a lot and uh, we've made some mistakes along the way, but we're glad you stuck with us. So I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to dive into God's Word together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to come today. Thank you for the worship that we've been able to uh, join in this morning. Pray that our hearts will be open today to the considerations around your word that we need to dig into. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to uh, apply your word and then from that grow closer and closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So first I want to thank Cassie and uh, for reading the scripture for us this morning and the girls uh, for leading us in worship. They, uh, they've done a great job, Galen and the girls. Um, just thank you so much for uh, making it feel like home and you've done a great job, ladies. So our text was from uh, Matthew and before we dig into that, I want to just remind you of a couple things. So let's look at this slide here. When you look at this slide, I wonder if you remember, this was our first Sunday together. We talked here from 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. This was our text on March 22nd, I believe it was, that we got together. And we were uh, wanting to say, okay, God, help us to be secure in you. Help us to be focused on you, not to be afraid, but to embrace your love, to have your uh, mind and, and to be at peace that you're in control. And then uh, we looked at this next slide as well. In the next slide, it gave us the three points that Sunday. To, to have a love for God and others, to embrace the power of his spirit and prayer, and then to have that sound mind that will be fixed on his word. And so that was 10 Sundays ago. And now that things are starting, starting to open up, right? Uh, stores are opening up. People are kind of getting a little tired of um, masks and the news. And what we don't know what to believe and what not to believe. And uh, some of us are really struggling with fear and, or what the new normal will be like for us. And I think it's just time for us to take a breath. It's time for us to uh, embrace uh, his voice today and see what he may want to say to you and to me today from his word. So let's look one more time at our text this morning from Matthew. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. These are Jesus' words. He says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Boy, we need that today. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, there it is again, for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This morning what I want to do is just give us four considerations, like an examination for ourselves of our spirit and our soul and how we're doing in the midst of this. 10 days in, kind of a, a good gut and heart check for us. So as you're sitting there on the couch and you're listening to me this morning, or maybe you're in bed or uh, out in the car, I'm not sure where you're watching from, uh, I want you to look at the scripture with me and consider these four things that we see very clearly in the scripture. And it's an invitation really from Jesus to embrace this truth. So let's look together at the first one that we find here in scripture. Number one for us is this, what is our position? Let's consider this morning our position. Because verse 28 says, come to me. Remember, these are Jesus' words. So he is saying, come to me. It's an invitation to come to him. All who are weary 
heavy laden, burdened down, and I will give you rest. Here is an invitation from Jesus where he is knowing as he's uh, speaking and teaching that people around him are tired, they're weary, they're burdened. And he, said, he has this invitation. He says, would you come to me? <laughs> Let's have relationship. Let's connect, you and I. Why? Because he's the only one who can really give us true rest. Rest for our souls. Come to me. When I think about this phrase, come to me, it is uh, something that we are missing in the days that we're in. We're not able to go and visit each other again face to face. We're not able to do much more than we're doing right now. And we're starting to really, really miss that. But that's an invitation, isn't it? Come to me. This inviting, I, I want relationship. I want, I want to know you. I want you to know me. There's an invitation to embrace all that Jesus is. And right now, church, I think it's a moment where we have accepted invitations to other things, right? We're probably indulging a little too much in the news and what's on Facebook and um, maybe Netflix or uh, whatever it might be, maybe too much food. We're indulging a lot of things that are inviting us, right? They're saying, I'm the answer. Come to me. A little more drink, a little more food, a little more of something else. But Jesus would step in today and he would say to you and, and I, come to me. Take a breath. Have you in the past 10 weeks found yourself busier? <laughs> more tired than you should be? Think I've got all this time. How can I feel busier, feel stressed or feel burdened? Look at this picture for a moment. Here's this gentleman and he's laying on the road and um, it's funny because I googled the picture rest and this might create stress for some of us. I mean he's laying on a road. <laughs> it's like he's so tired on his journey just laid down in the middle of the road and that might create stress or that might create rest for you. I don't know which it is. But Jesus steps in and wherever you're at today we need to consider this truth. What is my position? Have I come to him? Have I said yes to Jesus? Have I accepted that invitation to be his son or daughter today? And if I have, am I coming to him every day? Am I spending time in the morning or somewhere in the day to wait on him and listen for his voice, and see what he has to say about my circumstances or where I'm at? Am I allowing him to give me rest? We need rest, real rest, not just sleep and not just finding another hobby and, and adding another thing to our schedule that gives us some relief, but true rest for our souls. Let's look at the second one this morning. The second one is this. So your position is number one, but the, the second thing is your partnership. Look at verse 29. Again, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart and your you will find rest for your souls. Look at those words, take my yoke upon you. Now, when we see the word, uh, the phrase, take my yoke upon you, unless you are a farmer today, uh, you may not understand what's being said here. But in Jesus' day, in this time, there were oxen that were hitched up with a yoke, would be around the neck, and you would usually have two oxen. You would hook up that oxen with a yoke uh, around the neck, a collar, that would then pull the plow and be able to plow the fields and do the work with this oxen that had a yoke. You would often take an oxen that was experienced and knew its way around the field and put him with a younger oxen who maybe didn't so that the two could work together, experience and energy, <laughs> right? Yeah, youth and, um, and wisdom. And so here we see this picture Jesus is using for his audience and saying, take that yoke and it would be a partnership, right? There'd be another oxen or another person in this case who would also be partnering. Take that yoke. And so when you see this phrase this way, I think it maybe helps you or certainly helps me to understand a little better that I need to be partnered with Jesus. This is not about us saying, Lord, you've got to partner with me. Help me. I'm stressed. I'm anxious. I don't know what's going on. And ah, God, solve this, solve that. Would you come and partner with me? But instead, if we accept the invitation, right, and 
position ourselves in him, then the next step really for us is to say, well, if I'm positioned in him, I need to partner with him. And so maybe the question today is, Jesus, what are you doing in my life? How can I learn in this season that I'm in? What is it that you want to teach me right now? How can I draw closer to you? It's not Jesus, it's not so much come and be a part of what I'm doing, right? But Jesus, what are you doing and how can I partner with you? You see, he's the one who knows and has experience. He's the one who is going to lead us into everlasting truth and life. And so we want to partner with him. If you've ever gone somewhere, or maybe it's your first time going, and you're wondering what, you know, what this vacation uh, place has, or what this restaurant has, or what it might be like, you'll often ask someone else who's already been there, someone who has the experience, someone who knows um, you know, what it's going to be like, because their experience will give you wisdom and let you know whether or not this might be something you'll enjoy and something that you'll uh, want to do. Jesus is the one that knows everything. He was there in the beginning. He'll be there in the end, the Alpha, the Omega. You and I, if we are concerned and stressed and like that guy laying on the road, tired and worn out, burned out, this might be a great time for us to say, God, I'm positioning myself in you. And now that I've positioned myself in you, what do you want to do in my life, Jesus? How do you want me to walk through my days? What is it you want me to be about? You see, if we're going to position ourselves in Jesus, then the call is that we would lay down our life, our plans, what we want to do, and we would take up his plans. So that partnership is essential. Otherwise, we're going to continue trying to build our own kingdom. We're going to continue to be stressed and working over time and lots of hours, even in these times where we have right now, where many of us have had times to rest, but we haven't. We've found more things to be busy with. Let's look at the next one together. So we have our position, we have our partnership, and then we see this, our practice. Once you're positioned in him and you're partnering with him, verse 29 says, take my yoke, but then Jesus says, learn from me. Do you see that here? Learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Learn from me. What a great thing for Jesus to invite us to, right? Come to me, take my yoke upon you, partner with me, and then here it is, learn from me. So we have this picture of Jesus uh, wanting relationship with us, wanting to teach us, wanting us to grow in him, wanting us to flourish, as we talked about uh, last Sunday. And this invitation of learning with him is something that I fully embrace in life. <laughs> There's so much uh, I need to learn. And I actually really enjoy learning. Um, the process sometimes is not so much fun, is it? Could you imagine if you are, uh, you know, those oxen with, an, with a uh, yoke put around its neck? As soon as you have that yoke on, you know it's time to work. And work can be sweaty and hard and uh, it can be frustrating when you're learning a new job. I remember one of the first jobs that... Uh, I had when we were married, uh, Heather and I, or early on, planting a church, and I got a job in a factory, and uh, this factory was in Oshawa, and we built the, the, the cockpit, the, the driving portion of a car, the GM car, and it, uh, I joined a team of, I think, about 16 people. You had to learn uh, 10 different jobs, and you had to be able to do them in under 30 seconds. And basically, you were assembling this car cockpit as it came past you. You would have to assemble in 30 seconds and hit a button and the car would move on. You had to learn 10 different stations. And I remember when I first uh, got the job, I was excited. I thought, this is great. It's going to help us as we're planting a church. Um, I'm going to be able to support the family. and <laughs> It's going to be good. And then the first day on the job, I was so slow. I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying my best. I was working as hard as I could. But I couldn't seem to do what other people could do. And they didn't seem like they were even trying. They'd only been there a month or two longer than I had. Everyone, it was a new company. But they had learned how to do this job. And for me, it was all brand new. What I found out is I needed some patience and some humility. 
I needed to have someone else teach me how to be efficient at the job, every single one of them. And so that's what happened for the next two or three days. Do you know, by day three, uh, it was coming pretty easy. We adjust. Once we learn, we adjust and we grow and um, we understand how things work and we can, can flow in that a little better. And it became almost boring at times because you could do the job without even looking. You could carry on a conversation and you just knew it so well. When it comes to learning, folks, when it comes to asking questions about what's next, God, or how do I solve this, or what about my marriage, or what about these other relationships, or what are we going to do as a pastor, what are we going to do as a church moving forward? I want to learn from Jesus. Why? Because he already knows the future. He is the expert on everything. Isn't that good to know? And so he knows how best to share with me the wisdom I need. Now that's important here too. He knows me so well, God has fashioned me in such a way that he knows what I need. In the text it says, Jesus says, I'm gentle and humble in heart. If you've ever had a boss or someone training you who's been hard on you, and yelling at you, and pushing a certain agenda, more, more, be more productive. It can be really stressful. Some of us maybe are not so excited about going back to work because that's the environment we find ourselves in. But Jesus says, come and learn from me. I'm gentle and I'm humble. I think that's a great invitation. First of all, to come to Jesus and find my position in him. But then to partner with, with what he's doing. Not I don't have to create my own thing or invite him to do what I'm doing. But instead, I get to partner with him. And then finally, as we see here, this beautiful picture as well is something that we can embrace of learning from him. What a great thing. So what are our practices? What are the things you're doing? What are you practicing? Because practicing something is what helps us get more proficient at it. Do you find yourself in prayer and in the word? And do you find yourself trying to share your faith and practicing that? And now is maybe not the easiest time to do that, but we can be creative in how we're doing it. Practice, they say, makes perfect. Well, what are your practices? Are you positioned in him? Are you partnering with him? Are you practicing hearing his voice, right? Just sitting and maybe taking a walk or whatever it might be to hear what he's saying and then and then uh, actively doing what he's calling you to do. Let's look at number four, and this is our final consideration this morning from this passage. So number four is this, what is your posture? Verse 30 says, Jesus' words, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Jesus today, as we have seen here so clearly is inviting us to partner with him. And as we partner with him, our practices are going to change. We are going to change as people. We're going to learn from him. But here's the beautiful thing to remember in this. The posture is an incredible one. It's easy and it's light. Yes, we work with Jesus. And there are times where it can be really stressful and it can be tiring. But there's something about working with Jesus that when his spirit is breathing into our lives, it becomes easy and light. There is this resonating joy that seems to fill our hearts when we know we are doing exactly what the Father has asked us to do. And that Jesus, through the spirit, is leading us. That posture should be one that comes a bit easy. And that we can carry it with some lightness. Now, some of you may say at this point, hold on, Pastor Jay, I was with you until you got to this one. Because I find sometimes being a Christian is really hard and it's really heavy and it's lots of work. And we're praying and we're witnessing and we're doing different things. And it would be easier sometimes just to not do it. And I hear what you're saying. But here's the thing. When our posture is in him, that's significant here. I don't have the answers for everyone. I can't be the one who saves everyone. I'm not always joyful. I'm not always the one with the right answer or right solution, but he is. And so when I acknowledge that, it becomes a bit more easy for me. 
Or I don't need to carry the burden, the heaviness, the weight of the burden because he's done the heavy lifting through the cross. Jesus died and gave his life. And so for me, there's I, I can work and partner with him and what he's doing, but I can't create it or make it happen or save anyone or change anyone. That's his work alone. Now, I hope that helps you breathe today and rest today. Because the scriptures here say that's what God desires to give us, rest. If you're weary, you're burdened, and after 10 weeks, you don't feel like you're ready to go back to work or you're not even sure what life is going to look like. What's this new normal going to be like? I encourage you today to consider these four things that we see in this scripture and maybe even put this scripture to memory. As you look at, here at them with me, I want you just to think through them and maybe ask yourself how you're doing in these areas. Number one, to think through your position. Are you found in him? Have you positioned your life in him, in Christ? And if you have, have you stayed there as we learned last Sunday? Are you remaining, abiding in him, living in him? Or have you said yes to Jesus and then you're doing your own thing? Position is important. Maybe today you just want to pray and say, Lord, help me, I've wandered off like those sheep that go astray. I want to position myself back in you, the true vine, where I can be fruitful and I can flourish. Are you partnering with him today? Are you asking him to be a part of everything you're doing? Or are you saying to him, Lord, what are you doing? What are you busy with? And how can I partner with you? Give to the cause or serve you or do what it is that you want me to do to help build your kingdom. Partnership with Jesus is one of the things you were created for. It's one of the things that's going to bring joy to your heart and to your life. So are you partnering with him? Or instead, are you still asking him to, like a genie in the bottle, be an answer for everything that you want in this life? I would consider you to pray about and consider your partnership with him and in him. And then next, that taking of his yoke. <laughs> uh, that we are taking that yoke and then finding that we're learning from him. Right? So are you practicing this beautiful truth of coming to him and partnering with him? Are you making it a regular part of your day? early in the morning or late at night to talk with him, to get into the word? Are you practicing a walk and just listening, just quietly listening for his voice? Have you done that over these 10 weeks? Just maybe got out and done some yard work. And as you're doing that, just say, Lord, as I'm working, as I'm laboring here, and I'm just listening for you. What's on your heart, Lord? What a great prayer. What's on your heart? And practice hearing his voice. Practice waiting for maybe a scripture to arise in your heart or maybe God through the Spirit is going to give you the face of a friend of yours to pray for. How is God leading you? And then finally, the posture is so important here. Stay in him. Understand that he's the one who carries the burden. That it shouldn't be so heavy on you, but instead, as we partner with him, it becomes light. And it becomes a beautiful thing that we get to do with him. Four considerations. And maybe as we come through week number 10 here, it's time for us to take inventory to see where we're at. I'm praying for you today. Before I let you go, though, I want to read another scripture for you and over you. And it's found in Isaiah 40. And it's my prayer for you today. Let's look at it together. Isaiah 40 says this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not uh, faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted. Look at this, but they who wait, and it's my prayer for you, they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. My prayer for you today is that you would learn to wait on the Lord, positioned and partnered with him. And as you're doing that, that you are looking at your practices and what it is you're you're finding yourself active in. And then just let that posture be one of ease and lightness in him, that he would renew your strength today. That's my prayer. As you're watching today, that he would be your strength, he would refresh you, he would renew you, that any weariness or stress today would leave you, and that you would find his joy today, 10 weeks in. But to God, it's a moment. He loves you today. I appreciate you joining us today. Listen, one last thing as I leave you. Next Sunday is going to be a pretty special Sunday. It is Youth Takeover Sunday. So the youth have a special service planned for us right between Mother's Day and Father's Day here. And they're going to preach. They're going to lead the worship. They're going to do the announcements. And so I encourage you to jump in here with us next Sunday. Let's see what the youth have planned. Um, I don't even know what it's going to be like, but it should be a lot of fun. God bless you. Go and consider these four things and see what God may do in your heart and in your life, giving you strength this week. God bless.